Good evening and welcome to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting of October 1st, 2019. Will you rise and join the meeting? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I would like to entertain a motion to approve an expense warrant and a payroll warrant. Uh, the expense warrant is for 924.19 for $365,464.85 and the payroll warrant from 925.19 for $163,362 I mean $163,362 dollars and 95 cents you have that motion second it's printed any discussion all in favor aye. aye then i would like to approve two sets of selectmen's minutes from 9 18 19. you have that motion second all in favor aye. aye and then i would like to acknowledge uh, minutes and reports from other departments. We have a Conservation Commission minutes from 7-16-19, CIPC minutes from 8-13-19, Grant Writers report from September 2019, EMS report from September 2019, and the Fire Department report from 2019. A motion to acknowledge. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have some an anniversaries with the EMS. We have Dan Driscoll, he's been on for 10 years, fire department anniversaries, Luke Quadricelli for two years, and Michael Laird for two years. Mm -hmm. I'd like to congrac congratulate them all and tell them that we, we appreciate all the services that they do for the town and hope that they continue to do these for many more years yet. Okay, now we have announcements. A reminder, the Brookfield Apple Country Fair will be held from 10 a.m. 4 p.m. Saturday, October 12th, Rain or Shine. The annual features live, live entertainment, over 75 vendors, food trucks, and raffles, including the famous apple raffle, children's games, etc. Judging for the apple pie contest will take place at 10 a.m. Pies must be dropped off at the fire station before 10 a.m. First and second and third winners will be awarded in the following categories, up to 12 years old, 13 through 19 years of age in adults. Pies must be a classic two crust apple pie in a disposable pan. Trick or treat in the common and village areas will be held from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Thursday, October 31st, immediately followed by a parade from the fire department to the town common. A costume contest will follow. Does anyone else have any announcements to make? Good. Okay, we'll start off with our first one on our agenda. First one on our agenda is our town accountant with financial updates. So at the last meeting, I said I would be back on the first to give you an update on where we stood for our closing of fiscal year 18 and the status of 19 and 20. Um, unfortunately, we are, um, we've hit a problem with our fiscal year 18 closing. Um, we have been working with the Department of Revenue in trying to reconcile a $1.4 million discrepancy in the closing of your fiscal year 17 books. Um, from what was reported on Gateway to what is in your current um, VADAR general ledger, um, there is a discrepancy and it is an unknown discrepancy. Um, according to the Department of Revenue um, and from what we have seen, because we have worked um, at the tail end of the consultant that you had used before, um, they have seen this before. They are willing to let us do um, what they call just an adjusting entry um, to correct the cash, as long as we are not in suspicion of fraud 
It doesn't appear that there has been fraudulent activity. Um, based on the information that we have from the cash book, whether or not it was municipal cash book or not that was prepared by George Hunt, it does appear that in total at the close of fiscal year 18, there is the correct amount of cash in the bank. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and prepare an adjusting entry in order to do an adjusting entry to the general ledger cash, we do have to look at a number of things, one of them being withholdings. Um, your withholdings were improperly reported in fiscal year 17. Um, they were given a fund number um, on your balance sheet, which doesn't exist in your ledger. Um, so we have to determine where that dollar amount came from. Um, and how to include it in our adjustment for fiscal year 18 to get the beginning balance to be correct. Can you <laughs> take us through that piece one more time, just for clear to say? Sure. So typically when you withhold payroll um, taxes, any liabilities, what would happen is the treasurer would put the all liabilities onto a warrant so they would go out to be paid, whether or not they're being directly paid by Harper's, which is your payroll service, or whether the treasurer is actually cutting the company a check, which would be like health, dental, life insurance. Um, and then on the other side, the receipt as a turnover comes in. So most of the accounts, like federal, state, they become just wash accounts, as we call them. So there's never a balance sitting in any of those accounts. Um, but then for your, like your health insurance, you have the portion that the town pays, the portion the employee pays. So you can see each account zeroing out at the end of the year. Um, that has never happened here. Um, for fiscal year 17, fiscal year 18, and fiscal year 19, none of your state, federal, or basically any of your withholdings with the exception of your health, dental, and life were ever reported in the general ledger. So when your prior accountant closed the books in fiscal year 17, and any accountant when they close the books, they have to account for any withholdings that are still outstanding. So they somehow chose a number, and it was somewhere around $100,000, I believe it was like $95,000, and said that this fund had $95,000 in liabilities to be paid in fiscal year 18, which is a normal thing that happens. You usually have some bills that still have to be paid the first month right. of the following year. Um, but we can't account for where those bills are coming from because he chose fund 990, which doesn't belong to your town. Um, it doesn't exist. And obviously he chose that because there was no withholdings ever being withheld and reported. I mean, you're withholding, you're paying your bills, obviously Harper's is taking care of that for you, but they're not being properly done. Um, so when it came back to the town, it was getting recorded appropriately. Exactly. Okay, so the checks were going out. Everything's All, being paid. Every, everything's yep. been paid. Yep. It's just a case of the traceability on those. Checks. Exactly. Um, so we have made the decision, we, because it would be an incredible amount of work to try to go back through all of fiscal year 18 and 19, to try to go through every single payroll, put all of the withholdings into the system twice, basically, on a warrant, and then into the treasurer's receipts, we are going to leave them as non-existent into the general ledger, and we are going to start the process in fiscal year 20. Is appropriate? Because you're going to start it in fiscal year 20, yes. the fiscal year that we're in. Yes. So we're going to be going back and doing the withholding work for anything up to this point? We're going to start it as of July 1st this year. So, so what it sounds like is we had a practice of off-balance sheet accounting. Yes. yes. And, and what you're saying is we need to be on balance sheet. Yes. Everything has to be on the balance sheet. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so with, with this... Um, we do have a financial policy doc, uh, document, yes. and so are we going to be updating that to so fetch I have, these kinds yep. of things? So it has actually just gotten to me two days ago. Okay. Um, so it is my turn, so I'm going to start with my edits, and I have a lot to add. That's fine. And then I'll return it. I, I'm the last one, so then I'll be returning it to Excellent. you all. Um, 
So the withholdings is a big part of it. Um, we're going to end up with a $1.4 million adjusting entry. What the adjusting entry does is it just brings our cash up to where it belongs um, and what it says it should be at the close of fiscal year 17. And then when we do an actual audit um, with an outside auditing firm, they will determine if the adjusting entry was considered. Oh, yeah, exactly. Correct. So we get to the, the $64,000 question of the audit and the timing of the audit. So as soon as we close fiscal year 18 and 19, um, we would like to have an audit done. And what's that expected time? So we are, our original goal obviously was yesterday to have fiscal year 18 schedule A and yeah. we are still hoping that we're not too far off. My new goal is the end of this month to have fiscal year 18 in. Um, Fiscal year 19, I'm still going to keep my original goal of the end of the year. Um, we haven't gotten too far behind. So with that being said, as soon as everything is submitted and the Department of Revenue comes back with their follow-up questions on both, because there will be, um, we'd like to get the audit scheduled. So hopefully February or March at the very latest. Um, Excellent. Eric was going to speak to um, Tom Scanlon and see if he would be interested in coming back out to do a five-year audit. I hope he. I hope he will because he's very. They're very good because we've used them before. He was um, helpful. We did speak to him um, mm -hmm. regarding all of this to see yeah. just get some feedback. Um, so he was helpful in providing some That's feedback. Fine. So that is where we stand right now. Just, just one uh, small question. The, this audit, is that any different than what we've already budgeted for this fiscal year, or is that, because I know there was a line item we get for, I think, audit expenses. So I don't know if that's going to be greater or less than that. So the amount budgeted, I don't have the budget with me right now. Yeah, so that's probably a price for about a year's audit. Mm -hmm. um, a one-year audit would generally run anywhere between 12 and 17,000 so we're probably looking at more so it may become something that needs to be tapped into the reserve fund for so it, or looking at other options um. Steve how does this affect or do you even know balances like stabilization so I did a stabilization analysis and the figure um, that was on the information that you provided me and I think it was a balance of somewhere in the neighborhood of like 600,000 once you took out town meeting um, the stabilization balance that I currently have is three hundred and sixty thousand dollars so there is a discrepancy in the general ledger um, that has been there since fiscal year 17 that's showing more in stabilization than there actually is. Um, when you remove that, deduct out the fiscal year 18 and 19 town meetings, add back in the money that was put in in fiscal year 19, and then deduct out what was just spent in fiscal year 20, it brings you down to about $360,000. You're saying a discrepancy in the stabilization starting point goes all the way back to 2017? Yes. There was an entry put in fiscal year 17 adding 128000 to stabilization, but there's no record of that. What was the timing of the entry for the 128000 Um, I believe it was November of, oh, I should have it with me. It was posted six times in and out, making a correction. Um, it, it looks like she attempted to do it 7 1 16 and then 11 15 16 are the dates on the entries, but it went in and out six times and then stayed in. But I couldn't find any record of that amount. This 128,000 went in and out six, six times, times and then times. stayed in. And then stay in? Yes. 
but that dollar amount that's sitting in stabilization right now doesn't match what was reported on your balance sheet. The amount that was reported on the balance sheet is what we're showing is a true amount um, that does actually belong in stabilization, which was $511,134, which should have been there at the close of fiscal year 17. And the dollar amount I'm coming up with um, matches to what is showing up in Bartholomew, which is um, the company that oversees the bank that oversees your stabilization account. The 511 is what was showing in Vadar, but the 360 is what's sitting in Bartholomew. Nope. The, so the 511 is what was shown on the balance sheet at the end of fiscal year 17. At the end of fiscal year 17, in Vadar is showing that you had 697,000, which is not right. 697? Mm hmm. Okay, but I thought you just said that we only had 360. Right, because you had to add in, you had to take out the fiscal year 18 votes, right. the fiscal year 19 votes, and then add back in money that you designated in fiscal year 19 as well, and then deduct out the fiscal year 20 votes. And that's what brought down to 360. Laura, are you saying that none of those votes have gone through stabilization at this point? Um, in Bartholomew, I'm showing that we have done up through the fiscal year 19 special town meeting. The only things not done were the, just the June, which would be the 19, second 19 special town meeting and the 20 annual, which would be correct because I have not given the treasurer those votes to move yet. In the ledger, um, not, these are not posted. So back back to to uh, recap. So we're 17. I'm sorry, 18. End of this month. Hopefully, yes. 19. End of the year. Yeah. Audit soon after. Yes. As soon as we are able to schedule it. If we're able, if we get everything back as quick as I'm hoping, um, we could schedule one as soon as January. Um, realistically. We don't have to wait for the DOR questions. As soon as we get things submitted, um, we could just go ahead and schedule the audit. Sooner the better. Yeah, sooner the better. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah, they do. They have because they had only did part of um, 14. fiscal fourteen, and yeah, they have all the rest of them to do. Right. So they'll probably be here quite a while. And it, it, for five years, it would probably take about a month, um, okay. if not a little bit longer. Of not being here the entire time, but being on and off site. Peter? Yes. Well, is the implication of this uh, relative to free cash that free cash will be huge then because the money is not being transferred uh, from, from available resources into stabilization as we thought? No, because I'm going to correct all of these before those go in. Um, so 18 is still open, um, 19 is still open. So by the time that the, sh the balance sheets, well, it's really only gonna be the 19 balance sheet. Um, by the time the 19 balance sheet goes in, all of the corrections will have been made. So the stabilization account will be at the proper amount in the ledger and all the correct transfers will have been made. So I'm backdating all of the transfers to the way they should be. At some point, can you send out a summary of what you have for that balance, <coughs> actual balance starting in 17, and then the major I can votes make you a copy of this. Yes. And out at the town meeting? Yep. Because I just want to go back through and double check that we have everything allocated to the right votes sure. as well. Sure. That number seems 251k out of stabilization, not replaced. Doesn't sound right based on um, some of the votes back in. You put 261 back in um, at the 19 town meeting, right? But the 19, you had two specials in 19, one in the fall, and then one just in June, and then you had a 20 annual, and none of that money has gone back. Now, another question is I have to ask, 
uh, how we had the how we had the deficit in the um, general insurance and mm -hmm. our insurance now will that, has that been taken care of now that'll come out of free cash won't it that will come against the free cash okay yes so you can you can handle it two ways you can put it on the balance sheet and have it deducted off the free cash or we can put it on the recap um, and have it affects the affect the tax rate if there's room um, which we are not at that point yet oh, so we okay. wouldn't know so again getting back to the on balance sheet versus off balance sheet mm -hmm. it suggests that we've been off balance sheet for a lot of, a lot of these accounts yes and so putting things on balance sheet is is the is your action moving forward yes mm -hmm. yes this is a question i'm still i guess going forward do we have any estimate based on your work as far as what free cash might be I mean, are you close enough mm -hmm. to figure out no not yet i'm still um I was hoping to have some numbers into the recap to work on page two. Um, so page two, you enter in um, overlay information, um, not on page two, but you enter in overlay as part of what I do for the recap. And then on page two, I put in 19 actual revenues, and then I put in 20 estimated revenues. Um, I worked last week with the assessor. and. We attempted to balance 18 and 19 overlay, which he explained to me had never been done with the accountant. Um, so we made good progress. Um, we found a few issues, only two unposted um, abatements, which the abatements are what make up the overlay number. Um, so I'm going to post those today. Um, it took a little longer than we had initially hoped. Um, after municipal modernization came into effect, overlay was asked to have been combined into one account. Um, that never happened here, and it's it's been in effect for two or three years now. Um, so I've had to manually add every account you have, and you have 20 years, levy years worth of accounts. So that in fiscal year 20, all of your overlays will be combined, and it will be done properly. Um, so we are working on balancing the overlay. Um, close to what he's been using, um, not too far off. Um, the problem I'm having now is to, in order to do page two, like I said, I need 20 estimates, which I have. Um, however, I don't have uh, proper 19 revenues because we are still missing revenues um, out of the treasurer's office. So until they get those entered, I can't do anything. Was that the treasury receipt posting you were talking about? Yes. Yep, so those, until those are fully entered, I cannot enter page two. Is there a commitment? Is there a timeline commitment? Yeah. Timeline. Time. I don't know. I I've mentioned it, and I they're working on 18 and 19, and I'm just waiting at this point. I do know that we are up against the timeline to get the recap in, um, because they're hoping to start working on the the software conversion in the assessor's office. Um, I believe at the end of somewhere at the end of October, the beginning of November. So, I think is what the assessor told me. And our goal was to get the recap in and done prior to them starting the software conversion. Makes we sense. finished working on receipts today. Lawrence today we proved um, with Laura. She doesn't know yet because she's <laughs> calling me. We finished tonight at five o'clock. Um, on FY18, um, the only discrepancy we have is the beginning cash for um, FY18, so we'll know where the ending cash should be in that, is what we will discuss on Thursday. So our, our receipts and warrants right now are in proof for FY18, so we're, we're close, very close. But I mean, we've been up pulling boxes out for 17 and we have found we found many entries in the boxes that have never were never put on the system at all. So that's what we did today. And she just has to receive them. So. Good to see. And you are treasurer. Um, I'm assisting. Yes, assisting treasurer. Yes. It's going okay. Mm -hmm. Very well. Because the timeline and all working for you. 
yeah, it's a lot of work <laughs> to go through because you got to go through page after page, boxes that are up in the top there, and pull down a box. And as I said today, we found seven entries just by going through this one section of all 2018 that had never, I don't know, it was just put in a box. So we had to import and put them in the system, and now Lori will have to have them. So, but we're Right there, so. Just, just one other question. Do you have the staffing you need to get this done? Do you need more people? Or what? Are you asking me? Well, I was, you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm He's <laughs> asking your opinion so that we can. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was that's okay. Yeah, I mean, well, yes, we have the staffing. It's, it's a room, it's the size of the room that's the problem. <laughs> you know, it's trying to walk, you know, get stuff out from. And, Lay it all out. So yeah, we're working well at it. Thank you. Yeah. Just a quick question: Would it be would it expedite anything if you put a freeze on certain things, or you wouldn't be doing this year's trying to catch up with last year? I I can't personally. We can't freeze anything because as it is. Um, we're working on 18 and 19 and nothing for 20 has been started in any department other than the accounting department and we're in October now so we are already three months behind so currently we're looking at the same poor situation that we've already been in um, ahead right now which is not at all where we should be um, I'm perf yes in the accounting side I'm perfectly fine I am currently waiting on um, just other departments but yes so the perk of having a regional accountant is I have two other people working with me um, just not here so I have someone else writing that adjusting entry for me because she's done it um, in two other towns working behind that same consultant that did your fiscal year 17 balance sheet um, he prepared Goshen and Uxbridge and did them the exact same way and they had the same problem and she was our acting accountant in those two towns and she had to do the same thing so she knows exactly how to write out the entry um, exactly the way the Department of Revenue wants it. So I gave her all the information and she's writing the entry for me on Thursday. So in that sense, it's like you get a whole team of accountants, but you only ever see me. <laughs> so, so are any of your resources devoted to fiscal year 20, 2020? Yeah, so, so we're not three months behind. I am not three months behind. So your warrants, for right now for fiscal year 20, your warrants are current, your receipts, everything I've received for fiscal year 20 are posted. The only thing that has not been done on my side for fiscal year 20 is your receivables. Um, your receivables, I have just finished 18. I am halfway through 19, um, but I have done both sides. So typically the way receivables work is the tax collector does one side, the accountant does the other, and you balance them together monthly the same way you would do the treasurer side with cash i did both sides for 18 and 19 to quickly catch us up because receivables have also never been done here um i am three months behind in fiscal year 20 because i have not finished fiscal year 19. as soon as i get an ending balance for 19 i'm going to teach the tax collector how to do this the tax collector side is a lot easier to do than the accountant side, so I don't think that I'll have any issues showing Brenda how to do it. Um, and receivables are pretty easy to catch up with. Um, so I would expect within a month we'll have caught up on receivables. So on the accountant side, you're caught up on 20. Um, everyone has been paid. Your warrants are to date. You have a lot of scanning that needs to be caught up with, but that's so you say that receivables have, <laughs> receivables have never been posted. Um, so they've been posted. They have to be posted. That's how the tax collector accepts mm -hmm. her payments. Yeah. They have never been balanced between the tax collector and oh. the accountants. Okay. 
so last year or the last fiscal year that you closed so 17 what they did in order to close the books because you have to report your receivables in gateway all they did was take the tax collector balances out of her side of VADAR and they use those as the end of year balances. And they put those on the collector side and the accountant side and didn't report any variances. Your document for policy and procedures will be updated? Yes. Adjusting the practice that is acceptable? Yes. So the DLS, part of the Department of Revenue, the Department of Local Services, has suggested policies on balancing between the treasurer, balancing between the collector, mm -hmm. and we basically use those um, with a little extra wording. So I'm going to reformat them to include those policies. So as soon as that is probably all done, we'll probably have a meeting and we'll get together and go over the whole policy book. I'm ready. Yeah. Peter? Um, so it's it's not ideal to do both sides. It as long as it is noted on the gateway submittal and as long as I am upfront with the auditor and let him know that I did both sides, then it's perfectly fine. I got all of my information from the tax collector out of her side of ADAR. Um, I have access to that side of ADAR as read only, so I can't manipulate or touch any of the data on the tax collector side. I can't change payments, anything like that. All I'm doing is entering her data into a spreadsheet to see if we balance out. Um, so I will note that I completed her balances. She will have to review them at the end for the end of 18 and the end of 19 and she'll have to sign off on her own balances on gateway but we'll let the auditor know that i prepared the spreadsheet and is there a significant For fiscal year, the end of fiscal year 17 to the beginning of fiscal year 18, I had to make adjustments already to the general ledger side because what was reported on the accountant side was not actually what was there. It was the tax collector balances. So we adjusted our balances. Um, we adjusted them down, I believe. I don't have the papers with me, but I believe we adjusted ours down to match hers. Um, I don't know why they didn't match unless we go back and audit fiscal year 17 ourselves, um, we wouldn't know why. Will that be through an audit? actual audit, yes. We removed things off the system that should have been removed multiple years ago. You had farm animal excise still on the system that is uncollectible. Um, you had property tax deferral that was paid in 2006 and we had the note paid. Um, there were multiple things reported that just were never paid. Um, just not never paid, but never removed. Um, so that's all been cleaned up. So everything looks a lot so cleaner you have some now. Some stuff that went all the way back to 2006 that you're cleaning up. You have stuff that goes back to the mid 90s that we're cleaning up. Okay. So I just I, I wanted to establish <laughs> that with the questions because there's there's yes. Frequently, there seems to be a feeling that these issues started recently. No. And and fundamentally. We've got a long history of this kind of dysfunction, specifically between, I think, the balancing in the departments mm -hmm. and the reconciliation between treasurer and accountant, assessor and accountant. And, and so I, I just thank you for yep. clarifying. Oh, these go back a, a while. Back the 90s. Yes. Thank you. thank you for asking that. I just, I just, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when should we have this conversation? Probably, I'd say after Laurie probably gets FY18 and submits that to the state. Back to November 1st or on yeah, or about? Prob yeah, it's probably about right November there. 1st. I so think this is an agenda time. item for on or about yes. November 1st. Great, thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, where does that leave us with uh, a special fall town meeting if it's <laughs> needed or will we be ready to do that? Not ready, will we? If there's no, it, if there isn't any money, we don't have any free cash. We can't do anything financially. <laughs> and specifically, mm -hmm. if 
if stable and, and like I said, I'd like to see the ins yep. and outs on the stabilization. Yep. I can make you a copy before I leave tonight. Yeah. Um, is that uh, I think we may have to reassess the plan on the going after the park grant just because there really wouldn't be a, a responsible funding mechanism. Mm, I, I had talked to Kathy about that today. And a conclusion? And she said, uh, well, the way she explained it to me, and Laurie can probably pick up on it better, we wouldn't, if we do take, this money has to come out of, I've got it right down here. Where is it? Maybe it's in this Okay. She said um, we would have to take a, $119,633 out of stabilization, but she, but it's like only a figure if we get the grant. This, we have to take that out, but it's really just on paper, right, Laurie? Right. And then if we do get the grant, we will get, um, we get 83700 out for the grant, and then we would only have to come up with 3500 and eight. 800,000. 35,000. 35, I mean, I'm sorry. And um, she said uh, that, that will, um, that's all the town would have to pay. And then she said that it's not payable until fiscal 21. So it's the same so, as the, it's the same as the vote we did for the school at mm -hmm, annual yeah. town meeting, the MSBA grant, yeah. where we voted $2 million for their grant. Um, and our portion was only yeah. six yeah. thousand or mm -hmm. sixty thousand, whatever it was. Um, we would essentially have to vote to move from stabilization yeah. the hundred nineteen thousand. Yeah. You have to move the full uh, award amount. It's not a payable un amount until fiscal year twenty one. So if you so choose, because it's an eighty percent or yeah. sixty percent reimbursable yeah. grant, so you get the thirty-five thousand is all we have to pay at the fiscal year twenty-one annual town meeting. You could vote to rescind the stabilization vote yeah. for that and vote to reappropriate transfer of funds from free cash mm -hmm. for the hundred and nineteen thousand because you still need to continue the full vote amount. Mm -hmm. And then you're actually only going to pay the thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, but there's actually no money movement in fiscal year twenty. Right. So it necessarily, it's just, be, it's so just it would necessarily be irresponsible to take yeah. it to a town meeting vote if long term that's part of the town's plan. So it would be. What is Kathy saying as far as our our situation with the grant? Are, are we are we in good shape or? Well, she. It, she said that she really doesn't. She does. It's all been submitted. Okay, so it has so been we can't, submitted. So we need to have, yeah. continue this yes, discussion. Yes, we have to once continue we, this because we would not want to give up seventy thousand yeah. or eighty thousand dollars. Because she said that she would have to let them know by the end of the year if we're you know going to withdraw from the grant. Okay, so we're still back yeah. to November first yeah, on or November first, yeah. That we need to come back yeah. to this discussion mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. to how to move yes. forward. And then she said too, she said this could affect open space also, she told me. And that's all she said. Well, it 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 time it, it yeah. delays it, the timing uh, of the timing of right. that, sure. Yeah. But it does. So I think we should done. Yeah. So I think we should come back to get for? Hmm? What's this grant for? This is for uh it's playground equipment. Got it. Replaces Yeah, replaces ADA. King. ADA. Uh, so we I think we should probably come back. Um, probably November 1st and see how things are going then. But that won't leave us a lot of time to put something on the schedule. It feels like we ought to put it on the schedule and then cancel it if we can't execute it. Right? Uh, Mike, what, uh, the town clerk is here. Mike. You have 14 days <clears throat> when you, after you open the warrant. If you were to open and close the warrant after November 1st for the special town meeting, you've got 14 days. So if you were to open and close it on November 1st, you can have your town meeting on November 15th or 16th. Yeah, we all need to do that. Or if you have it later, you know, but then you're, you're really pushing up the time to get the tax rate established. Yeah. You know, the tax bills have to be put out and done. So you're already looking at a real um, tight spot. But <clears throat> I would just urge the selectmen to approach this with caution, considering the fact that we have such a minimal amount of what appears to be in stabilization. Mm -hmm. 
to go forward with a town meeting and take this money, even though you could rescind the vote, I mean, you're, you're leaving yourself with a lot, you know, a little over $100,000 yeah. in stabilization on paper. I mean, is this, is this project so important that you're willing to take that risk? I mean, it, it, I, I think it's a, I think it's a risk, even though you have the option to rescind, and um, I'd just be, I'd just be cautious, I would suggest. So come back November yeah. 1st and decide yeah. what we're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Okay. So we want to move on? Yes. To our next one. Okay. Our next one is, oops, let me get this out of the way. Okay. Our next one is um, to sign a PVPC housing rehab grant. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think it was only Just my, the one. Mm, yeah, my, my signature. And then we had uh, Ken Cleveland signed it today because he had to sign it also. So that's all done. That can be mailed out. And now, okay, now, now we have the WGL is the, their affiliate assignment request for a release. Um, they would like to sell some of our sole interest in this consent form. I don't know if like sole interest. Do you remember this came up several months ago? Yeah. Right. And you were cautious to sign it, so we vetted it with, it yeah. with town council. Yeah, with town council. Yeah. And there was one already signed, but now the second one just needs to be signed. Yes. It doesn't really say it has to be by all three, but since two are already signed on one. The yeah, we, yeah, two of us signed. Yeah, probably all three of us should sign it. Right. One was already signed. Mm -hmm. What about that one? Yeah, oh, okay. this, this so, one's already been signed but by right. two of us. All right, so motion is to, to sign, sign the additional documents. I'll second that. Just so. Beth has to do that. I stole somebody's pen. That's yours? I no, I have mine. Mm, nice pen. No, some pens just appear magically appear. Okay. Next one on the agenda is appointments. Okay, we have um we needed an alternate member to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and so we had a request from Maureen, Maureen Morano. She would like to be the uh, alternate, so I would like to a motion. Motion to appoint. To appoint Maureen. All in favor? Uh -uh. Aye. Okay. That one. And then we have another one from the Historical Commission, and we had a letter from Joseph Laviera Sr., and he would like to be appointed to the Historical Commission. Motion to approve. Uh -huh. Second. Aye. Okay. 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 And I had sent out an email for the, um, for the bylaw committee yeah. because I talked to two people on the, um, on the personnel board who said that they need, the bylaw committee has to be in place because yeah. they're going to have to use it. Yeah. So okay. Good. So we have. I remember last time, Beth, we hadn't um, we hadn't appointed any of the bylaw people, and you said that you wanted to see the charge for the bylaw committee. And yeah. it, and have you seen it? And it was, I have not. Okay. Well, I sent that um, back in June. Right after you asked for it, I emailed it over, and I just sent a recent email, like I said last week, stating that I was going to put it on the agenda okay. to 
appoint the this, this same people to the bylaw committee because they had agreed to be on it. Again, the, um, two people from the personnel board said that they thought it was important that yeah. one's in place because... Yeah, because if we're going to be doing so, our... Yeah. Per, yeah we, need, we need to have the person. No, we need uh, to have them. Understood. I just want to ensure that we send a copy of this to the bylaw committee. And what we haven't gotten in the past from them, other than a, a, an up-down vote, is okay. what's in this charge, which is a clear analysis of what the pros and cons are. They just basically say, we like it, we don't like it, yeah. so sad, too bad. And I really would prefer a much yep. more comprehensive communication of what the benefits or costs okay. to the community would be of those changes. So, all right, so okay. motion to appoint. Motion to appoint, and I'm going to ask motion to appoint them all at one time. Yep. We have James Cook. We have Barbara Wilson. We have Tara Brown. And Robert Bonds. And then we have uh, Harry Pearson. Yep. And I'd like a motion to appoint these, you have that these motion. people to the. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so if you want to sign them back. Next one is to set meeting dates. Yes. Okay. Now, in order to keep up, like with our warrants with uh, Laurie, I don't think we'll be having another warrant until the 15th. Isn't that what you said, Karen? Yeah. Let me see. What's what's you look at? Yeah, today is the first. Oh well, no, it will be next week. So instead of if, if you don't want to meet next week, you'll have to skip two weeks. You either have to meet next week. Or skip yeah. two weeks. So do we want to do we want to meet next week, or do we want to meet on the fifteenth and then the twenty? We'd have to meet on the twenty second. It's going to be next week, and then it's going to be the twenty second. Oh, That's that, how it runs. You have to stick with us. And then I'm noticing here November first is on a Friday. So what's the November one? So what's November the fifth would be. So the, would that Tuesday before November first would we know where we stand on the if financial we met, reconciliation on the twenty? So the twenty, the twenty, yeah, that, yes. Yeah, so that would be the so, 29th. We so have. let's meet on the 29th. Okay, so we want to meet on the 15th, the 29th, and the 12th of November, and the 26th. I won't be here on the 12th. 26th, is that? 26th is Thanksgiving. We got it. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's Thanksgiving week. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. So, so. so let's plan just in case, it, it, depending on where we're standing with our financial stuff, why don't we do the first and the... The first and the third? First and third weeks, yeah. So it would be t uh, two weeks of back-to-back -back meeting. Where okay, so it would be the fifth. the fifth. We'll meet, we'll meet the fifth okay, so and the 19th. Hmm? In November. November. The fifth and the 19th. The fifth and the 19th. And then into yep. December, uh, probably going to the third, September third, and the seventeenth. Yeah. And then that way, we yeah. avoid the holidays. We'll avoid the we holidays. That, so that's all good for so everybody. Fifteen and twenty-nine for October. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Now we have some special use permits. We have quite a few of them here. Why don't we take them as a bundle because they're all fishing, right? Yeah, that's right? what I was going to say. Yeah. So, a motion to approve all fishing permit requests. I'll second that motion. And then you can just sign away. You didn't say 1112, right? 1112 is off the table now? Yes, 1115. Okay, so we, yeah. we have 10, 15, 10, 29, 11, 5, and 1119. Right. Yeah, okay. right. Okay, we have one from, uh, this is for... The Brookfield Lions Club, and this is for when is he? When's he doing this, Karen? Has he got the date on? Here? That is an oddball one because he didn't do it online, but it's just, it said it has the date at the top. We're just gonna if you approve that. This I is for twenty. Yeah, it's got it's for twenty. Yeah, one twenty-five twenty. I'll go in and do it online. No, that's for the ice fishing derby, and then we have another one for four nineteen. 
2020 Aquabog Pond for the Lip Rippers Bass Club. Is that the same one? No, and this is another one. And this is oh no, that's it. His address. Okay, all so that's all one. Now we have another one for 51720 for on uh, Quaybog Pond for the Bass Bums. Another one 53020 at uh, Quaybog Pond for the South Middlesex Bass Anglers. And then 531 2020 on Quaybog Pond for the Northeast Bass Anglers. And then we have 62020 on Quaybog for the Mass Bass Nation. There's one that was underneath it here. Oh, another one was underneath it. Oh. 6620 uh, six, for the Avid Anglers. 627 2020 on Quaybog for the Tri County Bass Masters. And 718 2020 on Quaybog Pond for the Aluminum Boat Fishing Series. What happened is, because there's so many, because they just put the application up on the first today. Okay. So. 7 26 2020 on Quaybog for American Bass Anglers D36. 8 8 20 for Quaybog Pond for the Last Cast Anglers. 10 10 20 on Quaybog uh, for the Worcester Bass Master of Neba. Is this where our new policy of charging for the permits comes into place? Is that part of it? Or? Uh, that policy hasn't been in. That was for South Pond. That was for South Pond. It's not Quaybog. Oh, the, no, South. this is no. a fishing derby. You, a don't, fishing get, derby you don't get to charge anything for no. this. You just have to. And so I would like a, we have the motion. We have the motion. motion we have a second. A second. So any discussion on these? All in nope. favor? Aye. Aye. No, that's swimming and that's another day for another time. Okay. All right, here. Are we going to bring this up tonight? No. No. Okay. Now our next one, sitting special. Okay. And under other, I'll bring up a little bit. When we met a couple yep. of weeks ago, we discussed, you know, a lot of different things uh, that was going on, and one of the things that I had brought up was that I didn't like um, the fact that, you know, all different departments were collecting money from everybody, for everyone. So Laurie had brought up that uh, maybe we should have a town collector, and uh, Brenda said that she would be willing to be the town collector. Okay, so just take a step back. Well, no, a lot of times, when, if Brenda's not here, okay. they'll leave the money, say for oh, an example, okay. right. with Mike, they might have with Al, and I just think it passed, and this is something that we tried to stop back in FY14, the money being collected by all these different people. And so um, Brenda said that she would, uh, she would be willing to be the, um, the town collector. And what it was, if Dee Dee was up in Paxton, Oh, I guess what she would do, she could collect like water or anything that came in and she would just have to keep these in on a separate turnover sheet and then she would turn these over to the treasurer. Is that right? That's how she would do it. And then she said she would even, if people aren't here, I, I mean, if she's not here and she's going to put her box on the outside, she said they could put all of those payments in the box also. So I talked to Mike about it, and Mike said that he would go and see what the procedure is to make her a town, uh, town collector, if it's an agreement with the two of you. Well, let's get the agreement figured out. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and let's just sort out whether or not that's going to require a bylaw change, or if it's something that can just be handled well, under policy. Well, we would have. I know we would have to have a job. We have to have a job description for a <coughs> for a town collector. Right, and and the way, and and I think the challenge we would run into, and. Uh, Mary Lou, correct me if I'm wrong, we're still at a point where all job, dis all, even though she's currently employed as the tax collector, in the event that in the future those jobs were split, would that have to be in our personnel bylaw? To oh, have a collector no, you wouldn't. Of you tax wouldn't. Collector? No, but it would have to be a change in the job description. Oh, okay. yeah, that's what I just uh, said. And yeah, change in the grade. Because most of your, Laurie had said, most of your communities are town collectors. 
they're not actually just a plain. What? Yeah, I think that the challenge what? that we have is where it's an elected position and, and the current definition. I think it's right. gonna I think it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than us just Well maybe we it. should I make think, uh, perhaps that would be something to look into as well as the bonding. Um, I don't know what hmm. she's bonded for. Yeah, yeah we right would have now, to look into it that. Certainly it is something you want to yeah. check into and and that possibly would change it from an elected to, to a, an appointment. It, it was it was appointed at one time and then um, the, the uh, tax collector that we had at the time she didn't like the idea that it was an appointment so they had got a special permission to put on it was a petition on a special uh, meeting and they agreed to go back to being an elected position instead of an appointed position but I feel it should be an appointed position so let's go back Let's get the job description yeah. and circle back to the discussion. So I thought I did bring it up what? Um, just because Brett is collecting yeah. the pad fees. Oh, yeah, that's something else, and too. And they're not taxes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, and she was completely unaware, the Board of Health was unaware, but because yeah. they're not committed as a tax to the town, mm -hmm. technically she cannot collect them. Got it. Yeah. The Board of Health should yeah. be collecting them, and both departments were completely unaware. Yes. But she has been collecting them. They said in most towns, the way to avoid this is you have a town collector yeah. rather than a tax yeah. collector. So the question is, is that going in the procedure as well? Yes, it will. Thank yes. you very much. Change her position. It is. Yes. The and she, yes, and they have to do their billing too. I'm loving they it. They do their own billing. <clears throat> they, they do the billing. They do, do their own billing, which is how I caught on that they are not taxes. Yeah. And, but in all the years that I was here, I remember that it had been, um, the, the tax collector that took the money because she would always make me a copy of all the residents so I knew who was up in the mobile home parks when I was town clerk. Okay. And so Brenda said she would be willing to be a yeah. town clerk. Mary Lou? My question, and I missed part of that, was has the water department been consulted because they act as a quasi-town they completely collect their own money and yeah. turn it over themselves yeah. now and realistically if she was to do something like this it would just be a backup for the yeah it's just yeah that's, that's what it, it is. would make it more legal for her yeah. to accept the payment yeah. yes. which yeah. happens because of the part-time nature of, of yeah, Holly. The, yeah. there's frequently times when she's not in here that, that and people I just, want to pay their bills and I just feel but it's a better position to so that you know it's, you're not leaving money with the accessory you're not leaving your money here and there it's being left Peter with one person question. Peter so it, are we proposing that, that uh, a warrant article be placed making a town collector changing the, the tax collector to an appointed position? That's where the discussion's yeah, that's, going. Yeah, that's where it's going. And so we're going to have uh, Mike check into all that. Good. Yeah. And I'm going to I'll check into it. Both of us will the check into it. The policy document's getting better every yeah. day. Works it, for me. And what else did we it, bring it's up? Government, if it doesn't weigh, outweigh exactly. Now, what, was there government. anything else really that we, we we brought up back at the meeting? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. That was basically Laurie explained the same thing that she had explained tonight, and then we talked about the town collector, and then a, and the pad fees. That's basically what we talked about at our financial committee meeting that we had. So, if I were on, uh, under other, just I had one quick one. Back to the campground. Okay. On sure. October 15th, we're going to be visited by the Attorney General's abandoned housing uh, mm -hmm. people, and Kathy and I will be taking them down to the campground because they may, in fact, come up with funds to remove the last two buildings. Okay. Dee Dee, did you want to bring up anything from the treasurer's office? No, nope, I think the treasurer's office is we're moving daily forward. Okay. Um, Laura has been wonderful to work with, and we're we're getting there. It's just you know. It's taking time. It's a time-consuming effort. So we'll, well we've been off balance sheet for a while. <laughs> just, just a little while. A little while. Okay. How was it go for anyone? <laughs> 1673. <laughs> oh, 1717. First town meeting. Yeah, but we were incorporated though. 
1673. Oh, yeah. Yeah. First time meeting, 1773. Okay. We were both right. Okay, so we'll move on here to correspondence. We have something here from uh, Mass Dot. It's a review of attached report notes, and it says, please note the deficiency highlighted for your immediate attention. There was nothing wrong with the Quaybog Street Dunbrook uh, bridge. That was not. fine because we yeah, just did the work. But the South Pond Road, South Pond Inlet, they had all kind of uh, pitches and things that they took that needed to be worked on. So I'll copy that a little of the highway if you just want to glance. They just showed some of the things that were needed on it. The bridge over there was South Pond. All right. Okay. I hope I hope Quaybog Street's fine. <laughs> that was a Were you panic. affected yeah, ever by down. that when yeah. was you living in Charlton? On the Quaybog Street bridge when you come down by the clam box? No. It was out for a while. It was Shoot. out for a while. Let's go. Okay. Charter. Our next one is from Chatter, October fifteenth. Um, the Fox College Sports will cease transmission on the SPP tier second. And then on October 31st, the Disney Family Movies on Demand will cease transmission on Spectrum Channel 267. And October 19th, ESPN Classic located on SPP Tier 2 and Sports Pass will be no longer available. And that's all that we have for correspondence. Okay. And so I'd like, if there is nothing else, I would like to make a motion to adjourn at 731. You have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's good. And thank you, everyone, for attending and their input. September.